Today I'm reviewing a 2023 Mazda 3 hatchback. Now, a Mazda 3 hatchback is in the same family as the Mazda 3 sedan. Both share the same platform. However, I do think the hatchback looks a whole lot better, also is a lot more practical, and still retains all the goodness from the sedan. So how good is this hatchback? Is it right for you? Keep watching and find out. All right, I'm on the road, so let me tell you more about this brand new Mazda 3 hatchback and tell you about how it drives. First of all, did anything change in 2023? Yes, there's a subtle change with the natural aspirated engine. The previous two liter engine has been replaced with the new 2.5 liter natural aspirated engine that produces about 191 horsepower. So this is about five horsepower more powerful than the previous engine. And one of the pros I used to talk about with the Mazda 3 hatchback is how it doesn't have that engine auto start stop functionality. Unfortunately, that has been added. So it's kind of a bummer. But that's pretty much it for the 2023 model. There's not a whole lot of changes, and that's good and bad. So let me explain. First, let's talk about the good, starting with the exterior, because in my opinion, this Mazda 3 hatchback looks gorgeous. It looks stunning. If I had to choose between a Mazda 3 sedan or a hatchback, for sure the hatchback because of the way it looks. It's low to the ground. It's very wide. The hips, very, very wide. It has an awesome stance and the curviness to the Mazda 3 hatchback just looks right. I do think the exterior, even though this car has been out for many, many years, the exterior is still fantastic, does not look dated, and one of the best looking cars in the compact segment. Now, besides the exterior, I find the interior to be equally as good. Even though the interior has not changed for quite some time, it's still a really nice interior. Everywhere is covered in soft material or leather, and the placement of things are just right. There's a nice elegance in here. The two-tone with the red and the black and then the aluminum, it just looks and feels right. So even though the interior has not changed for many, many years, just like the exterior, I still would argue this is one of the best interiors of this class, of this price range. What's also good is this turbo engine. Now, this is not the new natural aspirated engine, but I have tested the previous natural aspirated engine in the Mazda 3, and it just didn't do it for me. It was loud, it was slow, but this turbo engine is absolutely fantastic and fits the characteristics of this Mazda 3 hatchback perfectly. So this engine is a 2.5 liter turbo engine and produces 250 horsepower and about 320 pound feet of torque in a tiny little car like this. It definitely makes the drive enjoyable. Zero to 60 comes in around five and a half seconds and it's made into a six speed automatic. This automatic, even though it doesn't have as many gears as the eight or nine or 10 speeds from the other manufacturers, I think it pairs up with this engine really well. I never really feel the shifts and I always feel like I'm in the right gear. And when you put your foot down, you'll get a smile on your face. And I'm gonna test out 0 to 60 in a little bit, but I do think this is a fantastic engine. There is one downside to it though. You have to use premium gas to get maximum power. You can use regular non-premium gas, but the power output drops to about 227 horsepower. So you lose a little bit of power. So it really depends on if you wanna pay a little extra for that extra, extra smile or not, uh, it's up to you. Nice, nice. It's not the quickest. There's plenty of cars that are quicker than this Mazda 3 hatchback, but it's decently quick. And there's a nice exhaust node too. That's surprising. Now, besides the terrific turbo engine, if you're looking to be engaged while you drive, if you're looking for something sporty, then you'll love this Mazda 3 hatchback. The steering is very heavy, very precise, unlike 
any other car in this class really outside of the the hot hatches like the Civic Type R or the Corolla GR. Outside of those two, you're not gonna find any other car in this class that feels like this. The steering wheel also, I'm a big fan of. It looks great. I think it's one of the best in this class. It's really easy to figure out. You have paddle shifters if you want to shift manually. The leather feels hard, but it has the right thickness. But man, this steering is very, very nice in my opinion. Also, the suspension is tuned differently. Very, very sporty suspension. Around curves like this, the Mazda 3 is planted. This is planted. So I talked about the exterior look, how this, this hatchback looks like it has a good stance. No, it doesn't just look like it. It does have a good stance. Your center of gravity is low. You're very low to the ground. And it doesn't matter what twisties or bends or curbs you're tackling, you feel very planted, very in control. The suspension is tuned perfectly to match this very precise and heavy steering. So again, if you like a sporty drive, you'll love this Mazda 3 hatchback. And to top it off, the seats. The seats are also very sporty. What do I mean by that? They're very aggressive. The seats hug you in tightly. They hug your back. They hug your thighs. So if you're on the bigger side, you'll probably find the seats uncomfortable. But I do feel them really holding me. So if you wanted to take those twisties or turns a little bit more aggressive, you'll be held in. Now, as for the features, the Mazda 3 hatchback provides the essentials. The digital gauge cluster, you have a screen in the middle. It looks like it's analog, but it is digital. So Mazda did something really unique there. So if you're not paying attention, you think the whole thing is analog. But no, in the middle, you can scroll through a few screens, your safety system, your trick computer, stuff like that. So that's quite nice. You also get another screen. The infotainment screen is 8.8 .8 inches. It looks bigger than it is. It's cleverly designed. However, it's not touchscreen, so that kind of sucks. You do have to use this control knob that can turn and also be pushed up, down, left, right. And there's a, a few quick navigating buttons to get you going and, you know, it works, but I would still prefer if it was touch. Inside this tester model, I do have heated steering wheel, heated seats, a sunroof, memory seats, and a 360 view camera system so that I could see around my Mazda 3 hatchback. So you do get the essentials. This Mazda 3 hatchback isn't fully loaded with all the bells and whistles, just the essentials. Now let's talk about the bad, because even though this Mazda 3 hatchback does so many things well, but also, does so many things not so well. First of all, let's talk about space. The Mazda 3 hatchback is a small little car. Up front, I would say it's okay. I'm five feet 10, so I have a good amount of headroom, shoulder room is okay, and hip room is also okay. Again, up front. But when you move to the second row, things change. Behind my driving position, my knee hits up against the seat, so I have no leg room and very little headroom. And also getting inside, I have to duck down a lot or I'm gonna hit my head. So it's hard to get in the second row, especially if you're taller. If you're above six feet, you're gonna be very uncomfortable. Now as for trunk space, there's a decent amount back there. That's why I think the hatchback is more practical than a sedan because you do get more trunk space and you can fold down the second row to generate even more cargo room. So that's fantastic. But unfortunately, because of how short this Mazda 3 hatchback is, when you're folding down the second row, you really have to push the front row up. Otherwise, the seats won't be able to fold down. So again, if you're on a taller side and you're sitting up front, you may have to sacrifice some leg room just to fold down the second row seats. Also, in the second row, you don't get any vents or USB ports. So anyone in the back, will probably be a little bit colder or a little bit hotter and 
won't be able to charge their devices. Now, as for the drive, I did talk about if you do enjoy a sporty drive, you'll love the way this Mazda 3 hatchback drives. Unfortunately, if you do not want a sporty drive, well, this car is not for you. The sporty suspension, you definitely feel a lot more on the road. So any imperfection, bumps, potholes, stuff like that, you feel them all while you're driving around. So that's the trade-off for the sport suspension. The visibility inside is so-so, not the greatest. Because this is a hatchback, the C-pillar is very, very wide. So your blind spot is huge. Good thing that this one comes with blind spot monitoring because without it, you may miss a lot back there. And also the rear window is quite small. If there are people sitting in the second row, they will definitely block your view of the rear. So visibility inside isn't the greatest either. Something else that bothers me about this Mazda 3 hatchback is this heads up display. The heads up display gives you the usual information, your speed limit, how fast you're going, you know, whether or not something's in a blind spot, it tells you all those things. But every time I start this Mazda 3 hatchback, the heads up display turns on again. Every time I turn it off, but then turn off the car, it turns itself back on. Like sometimes I just don't want it to be on. And there's no dedicated button to turn it off. So you have to mess with the menu. You have to go in the menu to be able to find it and turn it off once again. And that kind of sucks. And because this infotainment system is not touch, there are times where I'm fumbling around and, and it's just more difficult. So that's unfortunate. Also, some of the modern features like wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, which is becoming pretty standard these days, not available in this Mazda 3 hatchback. You do get the wired versions, but not the wireless versions. Other things that are missing, ventilated seats up front, pretty common these days, and also wireless charger, missing. There's also not a whole lot of USB ports. There's a couple inside here, inside this armrest, and I mentioned about how there's none in the rear, so not a whole lot of USB ports either. And if you're thinking about getting a hybrid to save on gas or a plug-in hybrid, forget about it. They aren't available for the Mazda 3. Now, as for pricing, there are five different trim levels to choose from, and only the upper two comes with a more powerful 2.5 liter turbo engine. Now, the base is just called 2.5 S, and it starts right around 23,500. Then you have the 2.5 S Select, 2.5 S Preferred, then you move up to 2.5 S Carbon Edition, then 2.5 S Premium, and finally, you have the 2.5 Turbo, which starts around 32,500, and finally, the 2.5 Turbo Premium Plus, which is the top trim level, and it starts right above $35,000. So to conclude, am I a fan of this Mazda 3 hatchback? I'm somewhere in the middle and it really depends on your situation. If you're looking for something fun, engaging, right, something sporty, without paying top dollar for one of those hot hatches, well, this is really the only option because it looks great, it drives great, also pretty practical, and it provides a really engaging drive. So I do think if you are one of those people, you will love this Mazda 3 hatchback, but with all that said, if you are looking for something that's roomy, that allows you to carry a lot of people or luggage or cargo, well, this is not the car for you because it is quite small. The cargo area, even though it's much bigger than the sedan version, it's still not that spacious compared to say some of the compact SUVs out there. Also, this Mazda 3 doesn't come with all the bells and whistles, some of the modern features you'll find from others in this class. And if you're looking for something that's very easy to drive, very comfortable, this doesn't really fit within those categories either. So that's why I'm on the fence, I'm in the middle. It really depends on your situation. So you decide. All right guys, thanks for watching. Smash all the likes, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for my future review videos.